So I'm Sarah Uton, 26, and I left London seven and a half months ago and pedalled into the British Embassy today in Tokyo. I arrived on my bike, but I've also been kayaking on my way across, and it's part of my journey to loop the planet just using human power. So I'll be rowing, cycling and kayaking all the way back to London. Uh, the whole thing will take two and a half years, so seven months into that already. It all started a couple of years ago when I was rowing across the Indian Ocean from Australia to Mauritius and I just had the best adventure of my life and really discovered how much I enjoy big expeditions like that. And while I was rowing along under the stars one day I thought I'd like to see the green bits of this world as well. I want to see more of the blue stuff, the oceans, more of the land masses too, and I'd like to do a, a, a loop of the globe. An expedition like this throws up all sorts of encounters with, with people, different people along the way from sort of all walks of life. The, the number one on the list has to be cycling across China with Gao Yaguang, a young Chinese guy. I'd been in the country for a few days, he came over and said hello and asked what I was about, what I was, what I was doing, and oh, it looks exciting. And off he went. And ten minutes later, he appeared again, jumped out of his car and said, I want to come to Beijing with you. A month later, we pedalled into Beijing together. Seeing China sort of through his eyes as well as mine was, was a really interesting experience. Next on my list of wonderful memories was the first time that I saw a brown bear feeding on the beach on the Russian island of Sakhalin. Uh, I was paddling down the coast saw a black shape in the distance, a dark shape, quite a remote sort of bit of coastline that we were on. So I was hoping that we'd see a bear and we got up closer and, and yes, it, it was a, a young male feeding happily. He didn't know we were there. And that was special to be that close to such a beautiful, formidable animal, really. I mean, Russia felt like a, a different world to sort of my world at home in many ways, particularly Sakhalin, it's a remote island, the infrastructure is very basic in places and you arrive to Japan and, and suddenly all of that changes. It, smooth roads for one thing was beautiful. I've spent the last the last few weeks cycling cycling down through Honshu and wow what a beautiful country. I mean the landscapes have been beautiful, the, the people have been very friendly to me. I travelled out to the Tohoku coast last week and was deeply moved by what I encountered there. I remember in Ishinomaki being on top of the bridge and looking around the outside of the town and thinking, gosh, it's surrounded by hills, how interesting. I, I didn't think they were on the map. Got closer and it was huge piles of debris and rubble. And to see a town devastated like that was humbling and sobering. And equally to meet the people in, and see that sort of spirit of fight, of trying to put things back together and so on was also really humbling and inspiring. The Pacific is going to be the longest crossing of all of this. It'll be between four and six, seven months I think. I'm hoping for 150 days, that would be a, a good time for me. But I'm prepared for 200, there'll be food for 200 on that boat. And so next spring I'll set out eastbound to Vancouver or the States um, in my rowing boat, Gulliver. In between now and then, as I say, first of all, a bit of a rest. I'm physically and mentally pretty tired at the moment. But then it's sort of planning and preparing for the next stage. The boat will come out, get some training in, uh, and also hope to give some talks to some schools and hopefully learn some Japanese as well.